Hi everybody, welcome. In this video we are going to add a script to our game. The goal of the script is to reset the ball once it hits the ground. So let's get started, shall we? First of all we have to add a script to the root node. We can add it to any of the nodes, but to make things a bit more easier to understand I'm going to add it to the root node. We're going to pick GDScript as a language. GDScript is easy to learn. It's a language very similar to Python. It inherits Node. Don't worry about what that means. And we're going to use a default template. This is the path. We're just going to put it in the root folder of the resources and we're going to name the file main.gd. Here we have the default template. The default template contains some different colored text, red, green, blue and gray. You can see that the gray is always preceded by a hashtag. Gray is the easiest to explain. That's simply a comment. That means that the computer will just ignore what's written there and we just use that to write comments, notes for ourselves and our friends to uh, understand what the code is about. Here we have a function named ready. This function will be run only once. It will only be run when the scene is created. For example, I'm going to write a function here called print and then add some text. Game started. Now we see when we run the game in the output we have the text game started. Let's create two variables. We are going to create two variables here in this function named initial x and initial y. So what are variables anyway? Variables contain data and we can refer to that data by the variable name. So in this case we have two variables named initial x and initial y. We're going to fill up these variables with data. This is going to be numerical data. It's going to be the initial x coordinate and the initial y coordinate of the ball. So where will we find this data? Let's have a look at the inspector. First we select body ball and look at the inspector we see that the position is known by the inspector so we have to refer to this object body ball from the script to do that we use the dollar sign dollar body ball to refer to the ball now we know that this object has a number of properties one of these properties is position and this in turn has a property named x. So if I we type dollar body ball dot position dot x we will get the x position of the ball. If you want to look up all the properties of the rigid body then you can look that up on the Godot API. The API contains information on all the objects possible in Godot. But I'll be talking about the API in a future lesson. So for now, just copy me. Next, we would like to print out our result in the output. So we are going to use the print function again, and we're going to type initial x, comma, the value of the variable initial x as a second argument of the print function. And we're going to do the same for y. Let's run the program and test it. As you can see, we here have game started and there we have the value for initial x and initial y. This should correspond to the same variables as what we have in the inspector. So let's double check that. Yes, checking, we see that these value variables are exactly the same. Moving on, we're going to have a look at the process function. Where the already function runs only once, the process function runs all the time. In fact, the process function is updated every time the screen updates. That means it depends on the frame rate of the game. 
Let's select all this text and press Ctrl K to remove the hashtags and to take it out of the comments. Let's delete this keyword pass. Incidentally, in case you're wondering, the keyword pass doesn't really do anything at all. And let's create two variables. We are going to create the variables x and y, and we're not going to create them in the body of the function itself, but we're going to create them up here, above all the functions. In this way, these variables will be known to the whole script, and we will be able to use them throughout the script. If we had put them in the function, then they would only be known to the function, and we would only be able to use them so long as we're within the body of the function. Okay, let's go back to the process function and let's assign a value to these variables. Again, we are going to assign the x and the y coordinates of the variable. But remember that this time it's not in the ready function, but it's in the process function. So this assigning of the variables will occur every frame of the game. And let's print it out too. And let's see what happens. We run the game. And as you can see, the X and the Y coordinates are printed out every frame. So they're continuously being updated. We are keeping track of the position of the ball and we're continuously updating the values of the X and the Y coordinates. This output, incidentally, is used mostly for debugging. The player usually does not see this output. Okay, now we are able to keep track of the coordinates of the ball during the game. So what we want to do is detect whether the ball has reached a certain region. If so, we will print it to the output. So let's go to the 2D view and let's create a new guide. So now let's add an if clause. An if clause is very simple. We just write if and then give a condition. And if the condition is satisfied, then it will do, it will run the code below. So here we have if y is smaller than 430, then we write a double dot here. In that case, print reset the ball. Let's test it. As you can see, it never quite reaches 430, so let's change that to 420. So as you can see, we are printing reset the ball every time the Y coordinate is greater than 420. Okay, finally, now that we can identify when the ball needs to be reset, how are we going to actually reset it? I just want to take the opportunity to show you one of the best ways to learn new stuff that you don't know how to do it is just to search for it on Google. So let's just go to Google and type Godot Reload Game. And there's a lot of help functions, a lot of forums out there that will help us. Here we have a pretty useful help. You can either use GetTree Core Group or in a more simple case, what we are gonna do is get tree reload current scene. So let's see if that works. Let's just type get tree dot reload current scene and let's test it. It works. Okay, that was all for now. In this video, we learned a little bit about scripting. We learned about variables. We've learned about functions. We've learned about the if clause. We've learned about the difference between the ready function and the process function. Next, we're going to do a pair of exercises. The first one is relatively easy. I want you to add to the script to make sure that when the ball flies off the screen on the top part, it's reset. So when the ball flies off here, 
it's actually reset to the hand of the robot. The second exercise is a bit more challenging. I want you to try to make the ball bounce a bit more before it's reset. One thing I don't like about our results so far, now the ball is not bouncing at all. It just hits the ground and immediately resets. So as an exercise, I want you to brainstorm about how to reset only after the ball has bounced a little bit. So think about it, just brainstorm. If you feel like it, you can try to implement it too. In the next video, we are going to implement the solution. So see you then. Bye bye.